what is going on? What is everybody up to today? Sorry about that. I will say hello, and then we will get right into a lecture on history and understanding the foundation of America. This lecture should be probably 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. And I'm going to teach you guys the foundation of how we're founded and what we're founded on. Everybody do me a favor, hit the like button button if you would just take a second just take your finger real fast reach down and hit the like button if you would i would really appreciate it i'm going to teach you guys something today that you didn't know yesterday this is going to be just i mean really informative i'm going to teach you guys as much as i can i have limited time i've got to get going somewhere but i'm going to share with you guys some stuff right now oh audit them is here everybody listen to me let me tell you guys something so so exciting this is phenomenal. Did you guys hit the like button yet though? I'm gonna talk about audit them in a second. This guy right here on this on the screen. Did you guys hit the like button? Because <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys something so exciting. So audit them, this guy right here, right there. You guys one of the moderators can drop his link down in the comment section. Audit them is one of the most prolific FOIA auditors, Freedom of Information Act auditors in the United States of America. If you haven't seen his channel, you should see it. It's unbelievable the information that he gets. Okay, what I've been trying to do is harness his brain, get his brain into my brain. <laughs> get your brain into my brain. And so now with the advancement of ChatGPT, if you guys haven't seen the ChatGPT video that I, that I created, you should see that because using the ChatGPT video that I made the other day, I got audit them and I on a live stream, on a recorded stream, sorry, not a live stream. And what I was able to do is get the information from audit them. I keep on pointing, there's his little tag right down here. <laughs> I was able to get the information from him to get to you, to teach you how to plug in what he knows into chat GPT and write your Freedom of Information Act for whatever you want. <laughs> Last night, um, I was so excited when we were done with the video and we're I'm cutting it right now so that, because there was a lot of learning. There was a lot of little things that he was saying to me that I was learning as he was teaching me how to do it. So look forward to that. Bronco Nation family, did you hit the like button? What's up, Chevy? What's going on, Mikey? Donald, what's going on, Gloria? Randall, we are Tom Trulio. What is going on? Jack Boot Thug Pig, drop it in the comment section. JBTP, put it in the comment section. JBTP, put it in there, put it in there, because we all know that there's a large amount of people who are Jack Boot Thug Pigs in the pigging industry. In the pigging industry, there's so many. But that's not what this is about tonight. Um, tonight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you guys about the foundation of America. Jack Boot Thug Pig, what is going on? What is going on? Jack Boot Thug Pig. We see so many of the Jack Boot Thug Pigs coming up here on the, on the screen. I'm slowly presenting them to you here. <laughs> Jack Boot Thug Pig right there from the tribe. What's going on? Chuck, 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 P says OTVO. What is going on? Kevin, Kiefer, Greg, what is going on? Alan, what is going on? The volume is a bit low. I hope I can, I'll try to speak up a little bit. I will try to speak up. You guys got to hit the like button. Uh, if you're on Facebook, hit the like button. Hit the like button. Okay, cool. Listen, I'm going to get right into this. Um, right into this. Right into it. Andres is here. He says, what's going on? All right. Sorry about that. Let me, let me just get the flock out of here. Okay. So this is, um, let me give you guys a little bit of background. In 2021, 20, during the, the scamdemic, what I did is I took everything that I just knew off the top of my head that I could just talk about out loud, I just splashed it on a wall. That's all I did. In Jeff Lloyd's office, that's where I started. And so I started to put up the pictures of people who I'd studied through my years of learning constitutional law and 
this is what I studied. I studied these people and I studied these laws and this constitution and this bill of rights. And that's what I studied for a super long time. And then I made this poster when I was on TikTok, and I, I, I sell this poster on deletelaws.com, but it's a great conversation starter and, and a teaching tool. And so I was talking to uh, someone on the phone earlier today, and he, he was asking me about the foundation of law, the rule of law. And so I wanted to, I wanted to break down where the rule of law comes from, where you, you hear the term the rule of law, but where exactly does that come from? When you say that, what does that mean exactly? And where did we get those concepts of the rule of law? When did that happen and how did that happen? And so that's what I'm going to show you today a little bit. And we're just going to delve into it. So let me jump here. Okay, so let me go to the graphics so I can put my cursor on it. So this guy up here, his name is John Locke. This guy's named John Locke. This guy is going to write the theory called natural law. Natural law is your right to life, liberty, and property. Now he's going to be born in 1632, and he's going to see the, the, um, the Civil War in England, and it is going to badly, badly scar him. He's going to be extraordinarily broken. And so he begins to, to teach and write in, in books, and he's, he's, he writes two books, one in 1689 called Essays in Understanding Humanity and Two Treaties of Government he published in, in 1690. But that's not, that's not all he does. <laughs> he comes up with a concept called the tabula rasa. In other words, what is on the table. And what he... <clears throat> Forgive me. Oh, well. This guy right here, he's going to establish that our entire basis of life is about life, liberty, and property, plain and simple. He also creates a concept called the social contract, like an unspoken deal between people who and, and people who are in charge. And the Declaration of Independence borrows heavily from his ideas, talking about individual rights and how it's all right to give the boot to your lousy government. And that's kind of where we are now. And it's sad because the, the government, it's the, the, the paper that we have is great. I'm able to assemble with you now and teach you these things because the paper that we wrote. But now, if you go down just a little bit, if you go down a little bit right down here, this is Jean-Jacques Rousseau. You see him down here? He's, he's Swiss, but this guy has a thing for people power and community. His general will idea was all about the community making decisions that benefit everyone. It, it, it's we the people. We're not living under Thomas Hobbes' social contract we're living under Jean-Jacques Rousseau's social contract, which his thing is all about us being in the same community. You can see Rousseau's influence in the Constitution starting with the words, we the people. So a lot of people think that our founding fathers came up with some, some ideas that, that they really took from other people. We the people is from Jean-Jacques Rousseau and his social contract that we have a say in things and how they're run. And then when you come down here, Charles de Montesquieu, this guy down here, you see him? Charles de Montesquieu, he goes, he goes by just Montesquieu, just one, <laughs> one, one, one name. He, he's, it's like, so he's all about spreading power around that's gonna keep everybody in check, checks and balances on power. His separation of powers and checks and balances ideas are the blueprint, the exact blueprint for the government that we have today. When you when you when you talk about Montesquieu, you are talking about creating the three branches of government that was not created by James Madison, that was created by Montesquieu. So if you don't understand that that everything that these guys did, 
Let me see if I have them on here. I got Madison on here. John Jay. Thomas Jefferson. James Madison. Everything that these guys did, they absolutely took directly from the founding, from, from the Enlightenment thinkers. It's... The entire – so now when when we go back to the rule of law, what is the rule of law? The rule of law is the constitution. That's where everything is based. Your rights right now, the Fourth Amendment, how has it been impeded? By Terry versus Ohio. Let, let me go down this list. I, I just want people to understand truly how things are so bad. So the Fourth of the Amendment is the right of the people down here. To be secure in their person, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. And no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation. And particularly describing the place to be searched and the person or things to be seized. So this is so specific that you there has to be a warrant issued for your arrest and then the person who is complaining against you. That is completely undone in 1968 in Terry versus Ohio. And take a look at the prison chart. You see what happens at the prison chart right here? Here's Terry versus Ohio. Go down right here. Here's 68. And now take a look at what happens to prison. We go up 400,000 into the multi millions, multi millions. And so now, how does it happen? So Using Montesquieu's principles of checks and balances, we create these three branches of government, the executive, the judicial, and the congressional branches of government. Now, we elect our Congress. The executive is the president, and then the judicial at the federal level is the Supreme Court. And the functionality of the Supreme Court is to make sure that the congressional branch, the legislative branch of government, does not violate your rights by creating laws that go against the Constitution. They can't go against your Bill of Rights, your right to liberty, your right to self-protection, no troops quartered. So their sole functionality, the, the judicial sole functionality, is to make sure at the Supreme Court level, is to make sure that the legislature doesn't write laws that are unconstitutional. This is their job. And time and time again, so when we get down into here, what happens in 1968, when when you when I talk about the dangers of Terry versus Ohio, is the Supreme Court creates a policy that officer safety is more important and goes over your rights. That officer safety is is premier, that it's number one, A number one. Nothing more important than officer safety. And so what does that mean? Remember, the Supreme Court along the top here are all the different Supreme Courts, and that would have been the Warren Court. The Warren Court did that in 1968 in that Supreme Court case. And so when I talk about the Warren Court and I say a holding, what does that mean compared to a ruling? A holding is what the Supreme Court personnel, nine appointed people, what they hold is what upholds the Constitution. So essentially, when they make a holding, they they retard the converse, they retard our Bill of Rights and they retard our Constitution. Literally, it, it makes it retarded. It is retarded typically for, for 40 to 80 years before it's undone. And that's done by nine unelected oligarchs. And you can just go back throughout the history of time and, and take a look. You're going to have Korematsu versus United States in 1942 by the Stone Court. And what is Korematsu versus United States? When we go down here and I find Kor Korematsu, whoop. 1944, Korematsu versus United States. So what, okay, I'm sorry. The internment camps, the concentration camps began in America in 1942. And Korematsu versus the United States was a, a person who was put in a concentration camp by Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And Korematsu sued for his civil rights being violated. Civil rights meaning what? Civil rights meaning his right to life, liberty, and property. John Locke's founding philosophy of, of what America is based on is you have the right to life, you have the right to liberty, you have the right to property. So when Koromat Sue sues, it goes to who does it go to? What who's gonna decide what is 
life, liberty, property for Cora Matsu, who is, is, is a resident, uh, Amer an American citizen. How, who's going to decide that? The Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is going to decide if they've created a law, the Congress passed a law, or the executive created an executive order that's going to lock up 125,000 Japanese people. So the Supreme Court is going to hear that case. The Supreme Court's functionality is to ensure that your Bill of Rights, that your right to life, liberty, and property is never infringed upon. And what do they decide in 1944 in Korematsu versus United States? That it's constitutional. Well, how come? Because FDR had appointed seven of the nine Supreme Court personnel who he appointed, the oligarchs. It's the Supreme Court scholar. So Korematsu versus United States, of course, is condemned, but it still happened to 125,000 Japanese people. So now let me show you the fastest way for you to understand what a holding does, how I tell you it retards the Constitution. If we go to 1896, Plessy versus Ferguson, this one right here is going to uphold legal racial segregation. Legal racial segregation. Now there's going to be two hospitals. There's going to be two restaurants. There's going to be two bars, two dance clubs. There's going to be two drinking fountains. That's what's going to happen in the 1896 case of Plessy versus Ferguson that creates legal racial segregation. So then if you trace it back and you go up here and you go to 1896, the Fuller Court, the Melvin Fuller Court is going to be the court that passes Plessy versus Ferguson, 1896. It creates legal racial segregation. So if they did that in 1896, can you imagine the rest of the holdings that they upheld from 1896 until 1910? Well, I can show you a few of those, but first I want to try to stay on track as much as I can. So here's how you know it's called a holding. Plessy versus Ferguson retards the, con the Constitution to say that they can, they can create two worlds here, some bastardized version, some, some horribly, horrifically bad holding by the Melvin Fuller Court. So this case right here, 1896, count the years with me, 1896, all the way up here until 1954, until Brown versus Board of Education. Brown versus Board of Education is going to overturn Plessy versus Ferguson. Brown versus Board of Education is going to desegregate schools, and along with it, it's going to desegregate bars and restaurants and hospitals and police departments and everything else. It's going to desegregate everything. Everything now is going to be, there's going to be one restaurant for black people and white people, and there's going to be one white school for black people and white people. So how many years is that? 54 goes back to 1900 plus four more, 58 years. It takes 58 years for all these people from the Melvin Fuller Court up here, all these people from the Fuller Court, the, all these guys right here, they all have to die. All these people have to die before the Warren Court is going to overrun and so then you go, well, how come Earl Warren, why, why would it that, why would the Earl Warren court, why would Earl Warren, who you know is a Freemason for five years, president of the Freemasons for five years, and he's the one, this guy right here is the guy who convinced Franklin Delano Roosevelt to lock up 125,000 Japanese people. This guy right here counseled Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Eleanor writes about it. Eleanor Roosevelt, who vehemently disagreed with creating concentration camps in America. But Earl Warren comes in, president of the Freemasons, and he says, no, lock them up. Lock up those Japanese people. That's what happened. Okay, so this guy locks up 100,000 Japanese people. Then he becomes Supreme Court, and then he, he undoes Brown versus Board of Education. Well, how come he does that? How come? Because he doesn't want to know, he doesn't know what's going on in black bars and black churches and black restaurants. He has no idea. And you can't go in there because your color of your skin's white. You stick out like, like salt and pepper. So he has to desegregate everything and everybody so he knows what's going on. He can't, he's a Freemason, president of the Freemasons. He wants to know everything and everybody, period, everything, everybody, everything, everybody. He has to have control over everything and everybody. That's what he wants. That's what he lives for. And so we know what a fraud he is. We know what a fraud he is just by just just by looking at these two cases right here. And I, I, Matt versus Ohio and Kerr versus California. So if you're familiar with Matt versus Ohio, this creates the fruit of the poisonous tree doctrine. You can't can't get any evidence off anybody unless you have probable cause or a warrant to search sp specifically specifically the person to be searched and the person or things to be seized. This upholds the Fourth Amendment, that you have to have a warrant or it's fruit of the poisonous tree and it's no longer admissible because they raid Dolores Mapp's house because, you know, uh, 
they're trying to say she's a prostitute or whatever, pornography or something like that. So it's all hazy. They didn't have a warrant. And so Earl Warren and the Warren court, they say, no, no, you got to have a warrant. And then all the police start to picket Warren, all the police departments up and down. They put, they put billboards up that say impeach Earl Warren. So then in 1963, Kerr versus California, he says the cops just need to knock and announce. This is the knock and announce law right here. The knock and announce policy. If the cops come up and they, if a prudent man has, has, has believed in his, in his mind that probable cause exists, then all he has to do is knock and announce. Just knock on the door, announce, and come walking right in. So I want to try to get back to my point here. You know, so we're at Terry versus Ohio in 1968, and we're at 2023 now. So that means 32 years and 23 years is 55 years. We're at 55 years right now with Terry versus Ohio. Plessy versus Ferguson. But you know what? I'll be honest with you. Plessy versus Ferguson in 1954 really didn't undo Terry versus Ohio. That didn't really happen until the 1964 Civil Rights Act. That's 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 when we actually, you know, I mean, there was desegregation. Some of it was done, but it didn't really happen until the 1964 Civil Rights Act and the 1965 Voting Rights Act, which if you take a look at the timeline here, 1964, 1965, go back here and it's, it's pretty much just going to be a redo. It's going to be a redo of the 13th, 14th and 15th Amendment. 1917, sorry about that. So, uh, 1865, 1868, and 1870, almost just a hundred years apart. The 13th Amendment abolishes slavery. You know, the 1964 Civil Rights Act says you can't discriminate people based on the color of their skin. It's the same thing. It's going on again. The 14th Amendment, equal, equal protection under the law. That's just like the Civil Rights Act. 15th Amendment is the right to vote. That's the 1965 Civil Rights Act. So, anyway, I'm just, I'm just. there's nobody here and just my friends <laughs> only my friends are here now <laughs> what's going on playboys what is going on what is going on good to see you guys ma'am thanks for coming thanks for coming anyway i just i just wanted to kind of go over where we where we actually are and and why we came No. That's crazy. Really? Hold on. Oh, this, hold on. I got to see. Hold on. Sorry, guys. I got to just take a look. That can't be. He got arrested. Press New Hampshire got arrested for. Was it live? Let me see. Okay. Let me share this with you guys. Let me get out of this. I'll show you guys the video of Press New Hampshire. <laughs> Yo, guys, what's up? What up, John, Lou, John, Smith, keeping the swine, Tommy, absolute defiant. I'm going to let you guys go. It's been a long night. I got kids at the house. Uh, I got a long ride. Yeah, or any other device or service to cause the hills. But where is the, this is the one here. This is where he actually gets arrested. And uh, go from there, I suppose. Um, that's really. Pause, please. You're causing me a monstrous amounts of stress. Okay. Are you gonna charge me for it, like criminally, if I steal, if I take him from you? <laughs> Back to blue balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Is this disorderly conduct if I just go like that and just? Is that this He's going to pick him up. I take the. He picked him up. Of course he did. All right, guys. 
Um, I'm probably just uh, probably going to call the lieutenant tomorrow. And, uh, you know, just because this stream is over doesn't mean you have to stop calling. Um, all the links in the description. Uh, I will be trying to post my arrest video fairly soon, as soon as I get them. Okay. Uh, if they want to release them to me at some point. Um, apparently Monday is when they're going to release them. Who knows? But, uh, yeah. I think that's going to be it over here today. Uh, as of right now, anyway. And uh, I'll definitely be back. Um, this isn't too far for me. And, uh, yeah. Actually, uh, Bali. Okay, bro. So, his arrest isn't mm -hmm. online yet? Take my camera's on, okay? Quit set your phone down, place your hand behind your back, you're under arrest. There, there it is. Just early electronic breach of bail. Okay. Just let you know that everybody came on. What's the breach of bail? Breach of bail, you're out on bail. Okay. okay. Um, what's, what's the breach of bail? I don't understand. What bail condition am I violating? Your, your good behavior for... Oh, I don't know. Place uh, Bali. That's what a tyrant looks like. Take a look. That's him. Someone take a screenshot and then Photoshop some red eyes onto this guy. What a tyrant. What a tyrant. That's what a tyrant looks like right there. Look at this guy. Look at his arms. Look at look at look at look how wide his arms are out on each side. Look how arm look at his arms. <laughs> look at that. Look how he's got his stance. <laughs> I mean, what a clown. Are you freaking kidding me? Look how he's walking. Okay. Okay. Quit switch. Phone down, push mail. Beta male, beta male, beta male. And you're back here under arrest. What? Just so they kind of breach of bail. Just okay. let you know that body came on. What's the breach of bail? Breach of bail. You're out on bail. Okay. okay. And what's what's the breach of bail? I don't understand. What bail condition am I violating? Your your good behavior for your good behavior. So. Good behavior now has to do with whether or not you go to police departments and film them. That's what the good behavior has to do with. That that's what. I'm so confused. What was his What was his poor behavior? What was his bad behavior? I'm not sure what his bad behavior was. What was his bad behavior? His bad behavior was what exactly? I'm not sure. So is he in jail right now? Is that what you're telling me? Is he Is he in Is he in jail? If you guys don't know Alan Hub, then let me just tell you that's that's sarcasm right there. <laughs> wow. I, I mean, how do, I mean, how does that make you guys feel? We just watched a dude go to jail and the dirty, filthy pig. Oh, Bill. No. Look at them coming out. Make my cameras on, okay? Look at them coming out to attack him. Just insanity. Insanity. Oh, do you guys want to have some fun? Hello? 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 Am I speaking with Joe and Sagastro? Oh, I, I don't know. Who's this? Hello. My name is Patricia here, calling from AT&T. This call may be recorded and monitored for quality assurance. Oh, my call. Do you know Joe Sicastro? This, that, that, that's me. What's going on? Yes, I'm calling in regards to your AT&T wireless account. There are some updates which needs to be shared with you. Now, before we proceed further to authenticate your account, can you help me verify your AT&T password? Sure, sure. One, two, seven, nine. 
Okay. Now this password is internet. Is there any other password you remember? Six 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 six. Checking. Now it this is also showing as incorrect. If you do not remember your passcode, it's absolutely fine. Can you help me verify your billing address? Yeah, it's uh one two three Main Street. No, sir, it is not matching with the record. Oh is there man. Any other billing address? No, that would be my address, 123 Main Street. I would like to come to the point I'm speaking with the right person or not. And spell out the name, okay? It's J O S E. Yeah. Yeah. D E C A S T R O. That's me. That's me. Okay, but whatever information you're sharing with me, it's not even matching over here. Oh, um, no, that's terrible. That's terrible. No, my, infa my information doesn't match. My information doesn't match. Okay, I'll give it a last try. Can you help me? Is it the last four digits of the social? Um, The last four, my social security number? Nine. Social security number. Oh, you want my whole social security number? Do you need that? Oh, just the last four digits of my social security number? Sure. Yeah. The last four digits of my are my last social security number are sixty nine sixty nine. No, sir. Uh, still incorrect. Maybe. Uh, oh no. You're somebody like I have tried to be somebody else. I think I've been hacked. Oh no. I think someone hacked sir, me. I think. I think this is a wrong number. So no. Nope. Also not matching. So I will consider it as a wrong Do you want my bank account number? I can give you my bank no. account number. Do you want that? No, no, no. no. You sure? No, no. Do you need I need to send in some money? Should I give you some money? Sir, I don't need any additional information. I just wanted to verify the social. Oh, you just, you just needed me to give you my social security number over the phone? That's what you needed? You just need me to give you my social security number? Is that all you needed? Anything else? Oh, you are? You are? You're verifying who you with again? Who, who do you work for? No, who do, but who do you work for? Who do you work for? Oh, from AT&T? Where at? Where are you at right now? Are you in America? Or are you somewhere else? I cannot, I cannot share oh. any information with you. Okay. I'm here to give, give details regarding your, your account. That's oh, your account. okay. You need my my uh, my my social security number again? Should we try that again? Yeah, only last four digits. Okay, okay. Let's try seven one seven seven six. So it is not matching, sir. Oh, no. This is somebody else's account. This is not true. Oh, no. Is, well, is there anything else I can give you over the phone since you're just, I mean, I mean, do you want to, you know, earlier, though, you know, th there's something funny, though. Earlier, I, I talked to AT&T on the phone. T today, earlier on the phone, I talked to AT&T. Okay. Today. They, they said there's these people who are calling Americans and trying to scam them from another country, trying to get their information. That's what they told me today. And I, oh, that's what I heard from AT and T though. There's a there's a number I can call. I called AT and T myself. They told me already. Yeah. From our side, you can directly reach to customer service of AT&T. If you want, they can share that number as well. Okay, go ahead. Okay, that is the reason you're oh. getting a different phone number. AT&T gives me Not a call and they want my social security number. You think that's true? You think AT&T calls me and wants my social security number? Do you believe that? You think I got to give my social security number to AT&T over my phone? Do you think that's true? So that is the reason I that, but do you think that's true? No, I'm at, hold on a minute. Do you think that's true? Do you think that AT&T would call me and say, give me your social security number? So I asked for only last four digits for verification. You, you're, you're lying. 
Thing. If you want you're lying, to though. You yeah, but you're lying. Them. You're you're a liar. You're lying. So this conversation is going nowhere. So I'm just gonna call. Oh, you, you don't. I, but you guys are gonna call me back in a few minutes. You guys just keep calling me and calling me, and I I see the phone call, and I just want to tell you all, I I just not gonna work. Won't work. Nice try though. Good try won't work okay i gotta go baby you were you were actually my entertainment you know that i made you entertainment for youtube everybody just heard you talking so many people just heard you talking you're such a clown now on the internet every we have your voice we're gonna download it we're gonna make artificial intelligence we're gonna make your voice a voice that we're gonna replicate all over the internet you really made a huge mistake I recorded your whole voice just now. We got your voice. We're going to duplicate your voice. So I'm again saying that if you do not wish to share any of the information with us, you can directly reach to customer service of HMC. <laughs> They've tried to scam me a few times now. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. <laughs> it won't work it will never work you there's there's too many people there's too many people there's too many people who know right from wrong and there's just so many morons in the world it's unbelievable good luck new, new now news now new hampshire good luck bro there was a couple things i wanted to show you guys in police brutality right here that i saw yesterday A former Middlesex Sheriff's deputy is facing federal charges accused of threatening to burn down the Plymouth County Courthouse and kill the employees there. Former deputy actually went so far as to name a date he wanted to attack the courthouse here, but instead he was taken into custody. I'm coming to kill you. On his YouTube channel, 42-year-old Joshua Ford of Kingston yelling and making threats in a video he titled, War Has Been Declared, Expletive Them All. I am gonna burn that place to the ground and I'm gonna get justice. And justice he's now getting. The former Middlesex County Sheriff's Deputy indicted Wednesday for threatening to burn down the Plymouth County Courthouse and kill their security officers. According to documents, in March, Ford, using his Yahoo email account, messaged about 140 Massachusetts law enforcement officers multiple times, asking them to suit up for a fight. He allegedly signed the messages Joshua P. Ford, Middlesex Deputy Sheriff, even though he no longer worked there. The 11-minute vigilante rant, asserting the justice system is corrupt. I gotta see this 11-minute video. I mean, I, I got a free trifold for anybody who finds this video and sends it to me just real quick in the links. Wow, we got to find this video. I hope they have it somewhere. And tell my father, if I die, I die fighting. The Middlesex Sheriff. Tell my father, he's got that Massachusetts uh, heavy accent. Office saying in a statement, the threats made by this former employee against our Middlesex Sheriff's Office staff and court personnel in Plymouth County were alarming and deeply disturbing. A federal prosecutor say Ford is set to appear in U.S. District Court in Boston at some point in the near future, but they have not yet named a date. We're live in Plymouth tonight. I'm Kirsten Glavin, NBC10 Boston. What do you think his plan was? What do you think his, what do you think his plan was, though? Just wondering. The investigation will determine if the reserve officer broke the law by firing a weapon into the back of a fleeing car. He didn't just shoot at the car as it was pulling off. He was also live streaming the video to social media and deleted it, according to the detectives who investigated it. This alarming video was a reserve West Baton Rouge Sheriff's deputy using his personal weapon since he... Look at this clown. Look at him. Look at how he's standing. He posed like that for a picture as a sheriff. Look, look, I mean, what's up with their arms being out like this? 
Why are all there? Why do they all have the back the size of Manhattan? He's a reserve. She opened fire. fire on a car as it pulled away during. He shot at a car that drove away, tried to kill the people. Did you see the bullet hit the window? That was crazy. He shot at the reserve. What the fuck? He shot his gun at people who drove away. Whoa. She opened fire. Shots on fired. On a car as it pulled away during a traffic stop. The vehicle, a Lexus SUV, was flagged by drug interdiction units because it didn't have a license plate. Put that vehicle in park. Whoa! Shots fired. A reserve deputy identified as Sean Pardazzi working that night got spooked and sprayed the car with bullets. Firing at least five shots into the back of the vehicle. Pardazzi was fired from his reserve role in February, even though this incident happened eight months earlier. An investigation was opened last what? month when this public records request... He shot at a car driving down a freeway He sh five months ago? Five months ago, he shot at a car driving down the freeway. And they kept him on the job. He's shooting at cars driving away. Whoa. Could you imagine if you had to go home and tell people what happened? Guy was shooting at me. What happened to your car? Cop shot my window out was sent to the sheriff's office. These internal affairs reports obtained through a public records request are raising questions about what happened last year. The Lexus was registered to former Port Allen police chief Esdron Brown, and he was unaware until the call about his car being stolen, and upon checking, he found that his vehicle had been stolen the locked gate. The reports note that's, that's where things get even more interesting. interesting. Agent, Agent Sean Pardazzi had live streamed the incident on his Facebook, Facebook training page, Triple I Solutions by Sean Pardazzi. Note, Sean, Sean Pardazzi is a well-known interdiction officer who travels around the country teaching classes on interdiction. After being asked about it, he deleted the video. Sean Pardazzi was fired in February, months after the initial incident took place. He's now facing charges of illegal discharge of a firearm and obstruction of justice. Vehicle in park. Shot fired. This video was filmed from a dash camera on a West Baton Rouge Sheriff's Unit. Pardazzi was working as a reserve doing drug interdiction work on the interstate when they stopped a vehicle that didn't have a license plate. That's when Pardazzi opened fire. Investigators determined he was live streaming the, the stop on his Facebook page, but when they went to get it, he told them he had deleted it. That's where the obstruction charge comes from. We're told Pardazzi and his lawyers are now trying to prearrange a time for him to turn himself in. Both charges, obstruction of justice and illegal discharge of a firearm, are felonies. Look how he stands. Now I want to show you guys something. The investigation will determine if the reserve officer broke the law. Now I'm going to show you guys something real quick here. So interdiction, what he was just saying. He teaches interdiction, legal or law enforcement context. In this context, interdiction refers to the act of prohibiting or restraining certain actions or activities, often through legal means. For example, drug interdiction involves efforts by cops to prevent illegal trafficking of drugs. So he's a drug interdiction cop. So he's a drug trafficking cop. Okay, got it. And that's what he does. Let's go um let's go let's go to the next one real quick and see what we got. Sir, so can I ask you a question? Can I get your name back, please? First? Awesome. Um, I have a quick question, which, um, you know, to me, it's actually, I understand it. You know, a man's got to do what a man's got to do. You got to, you know, you get, when you got to go, you got to go. But um, your name behind the dumpster. If a, the public was caught doing that, what would happen? I'm sorry? If
guys back there peeing. I figured that's what he did. So the officer just urinated behind the dumpster, which is fine. I mean, the man had to go. But if the public... So, um, well, there's a, there's a problem, you know. Look, I'm... If you if it's an emergency and you have to go pee, I'm all for you peeing. If you have to go pee, I don't think it should be a crime that you had to go pee on a sidewalk, right? However, at the same time, if you go by Kant's theory of categorical imperative, if we all go out and pee on the street, then it's going to be really smelly streets, and we're going to get typhus back, which is a disease that you get from dirty streets with urine on them. So... Um, I'm okay if you have to go pee. Like this cop obviously had to go pee, so busting his balls over it. But if he's ever arrested anybody, that's what I'd like to know. If he's ever arrested anybody for peeing. Was caught doing this, what would happen? So exposure? Um, it's a lot of charges right there that the public or the citizens would have been charged with. But that's what we have, folks. That's what we have. The CMPD can do whatever they want to because the Internal Affairs backs them up. The Citizen Review Board backs them up. The mayor that goes to prison backs them up. Let's just see. Uh, fine. Let me just see him beat him up. Uh, actually, I understand it. You know, a man's got to do what a man's got to do. You got to, you know, you get, when you got to go, you got to go. But um, you're an behind the dumpster. If a, the public was caught doing that, what would happen? I'm sorry? If the public was caught urinating behind that dumpster, behind that building, what would happen? If you caught a public urinating behind that dumpster, would you not go to jail for decent exposure? Would you not get charged for these, whatever the charges are? Just ask him. I noticed you used the bathroom behind the dumpster, and I'm, have you ever took anybody to jail for urinating in public? I threw a trash room. You also trash. urinated behind the dumpster, sir. I got evidence, and I also saw you. Um, I'm just asking, have you ever took anybody to jail for your name behind the dumpster? Okay. Have you took anybody to jail for every your name behind the dumpster? Well, listen, don't ever take nobody to jail for your name behind the dumpster, boy, because I got you. I got you, man. Oh, Adam, uh, Alan Hub. Alan Hub. Where's Alan? Is Alan here? That's the Mecklenburg, North Carolina Police Department. Alan, are you seeing that? Did you just see that? What's the deal? What is the deal there? Is he gonna say sorry? So that's what we have, folks. The officers in Charlotte. That's what we have. That's what it's not done, he said. What's that cop gonna do? That filthy. So we have, folks. Put it in the comments, JBTP, Jack Boot Thug Pig. Put it in the comments, Jack Boot Thug Pig. Look at him, he's driving all around. Trying to run from it. Come on, man. Where are you going, piggy? Talk to him. Let me go talk to him. He right here hiding. Let me talk to him. He's right here, guys. Yeah. Let him know, bro. Let him know he's a pig. 
Knock on that window. Hey. Knock Yo. on the window. Hey. Knock on the window. Come on, man. It's your car, brother. Hey. Knock. Let's click over to YouTube real quick and see what the name of this auditor is. Give him a little credit. Sorry, can I ask you a question? Okay, so this is Behind the Scenes Carolinas. Let me switch this over real quick right here. I'm just going to drop this right here in the chat. Paste. Sorry, so can I ask you a question? So this is uh, Behind the Scenes Carolina. I'm already subscribed. What's up, Playboy? I'm already subscribed to your channel. I'm going to give you a like. I'm going to drop this link in the comment section so that people can also pop over here and drop him a like and a subscribe. He just did it. I'm sure Alan Hub's going to want to get over there because that's his area of the woods where he uh, takes on the cops. Yo, Team DLZ rolling through. Amazing. Amazing. Dude was good, man. Dude was really good. I popped that in there. Now let's go down here. State trooper who choked a woman and fought two others outside of a nightclub returns to work, suspended two years without pay. So, wait. Wait. We got... we. Whoa, hold on a second. I'm sorry. I'm a little confused here. We got dudes who are choking chicks choked a woman and fought others outside of a nightclub and now he's going back to work what what is the world coming to what are we talking about are you freaking kidding me that's the headline women and after our off-duty state trooper involved in an altercation with a group of women and after our report aired, that trooper was suspended without pay for two years. Whoa, he initiated the action. He initiated the physical contact. Suspended without pay of women. And after our report aired, that trooper was suspended without pay for two years. But tonight, the I-team's chief investigator, Sheriff Yandaka, has learned that the state police are giving him his badge back and his gun back and putting him back on the state payroll. The chaotic scene was captured on video outside a Boston nightclub in October of 2021. An off-duty Massachusetts state trooper. Look at this dude. Wearing a red plaid shirt. Look at this dude. He's all, he's all built up. Is involved in a dispute with the group. Seconds later, the video shows that he shoves her. The confrontation escalating. No, it didn't show the con Oh, look at the hand on the throat. It didn't show the confrontation escalating state-run media. It showed him push somebody and start the physical brawl. Seconds later, the video shows the confrontation escalating with the trooper putting this woman in a chokehold from behind and punching this man in the face. Days after the incident, the I-team talked to the man by phone. Whoa. I didn't really Whoa. Nasty. Realized that he was an off-duty state trooper fighting women. That's the only reason why I got involved. At one point, the group surrounds. Okay, he's either gay or talks like that. And attacks him. Other off-duty troopers who were there get involved in the fray. This female yeah. male trooper grabs this man to the ground. He says. While he was pinned down, the trooper came over and began punching him. I do want this to be justice. We do want to see him fired. A police officer what? should not be acting like this on or off duty what? or a man in general. The trooper was suspended but was not fired and is now going back to work in October. With what the blood? What? <laughs> What are we talking about? What kind of bozo clown world are we living in? He's not fit to be a cop. He's not fit to be in charge. He must tow the thin blue line. We contacted the attorney representing him, but we did not hear back. 
We also reached out to the state police about the duty status of the other troopers in the video, but no one responded. Cheryl Fiandaka, WBZ News. Jiminy Crickets, you gotta be freaking kidding me. Get back! Get back! Hold on a second. Just so you know, the title of this video, my fired Miami officer who pulled pregnant woman out of a car, placed knee on her neck, and tasered her stomach will serve 30 days in jail on Mr. Minery battery trespassing convictions. He put a taser on a pregnant woman's stomach. What a psycho. A former Miami Gardens police officer has been sentenced to jail time for a rough arrest that was caught. Oh, she doesn't even look real. On camera, Local 10's Land Morajon has reaction to his sentence. 30 days, Dade County Jail. Former Miami Gardens. 30 days? Oh, listen. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. 30 days and hold on a second. If you or I held a woman down who was pregnant and we put a taser on her stomach and then we press the button and then we put our knee on her stomach and then probably put her in torture cuffs, you and I would go to prison for a decade. He deserves at least a year for tasing her in the stomach when she was pregnant. The state-run media said it escalated with the last guy. So we, they probably cut out the part of her saying, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant, and then show him tase her in the stomach. Evil. These people are evil. Police officer Jordi Yanis Martel swayed in his chair while being sentenced to 30 days in the Miami Dade jail and 18 months probation. He is serving a little bit of jail time, so I'm thankful for that. This after his conviction back in June on trespassing and battery charges. So he was even in the wrong place. If you and I were in the wrong place and we tased somebody, we'd be in prison for a decade. This is a case of abuse of authority. The conviction stemmed from a January 2020 encounter with Sophia Satchel outside Tootsie's Cabaret. Well, I'm going to get you out of the car. The club. Wow. Why is he outside Tootsie's? Hmm. Asked Giannis Martel to cite Satchel for trespassing, but when she refused to get out of her car. Oh, reach in my car. Giannis Martel reached in, pulled her out, and tased her twice. Oh. The judge considered words from the victim herself. From his knee choking the life out of me, fabricating reports and lying on me, to being tased multiple times in the abdomen while being pregnant, I want him to suffer as much as he intended for me to suffer that night. As well as the fact that Yanis Martel was also the subject of other internal affairs investigations regarding excessive force. Oh my goodness, there's a shocker. There's a shocker. What is the story we just saw before this one? We this that they're gonna let the cop back on the force who grabbed a listen. He grabbed a woman from behind and ripped her up in the air. He where the other guy was down, little wafy gay guy, he was throwing uppercuts as the guy was on the ground. And they put him back as being a pigger, copper. And now now we see that this guy is an abusive, authoritarian piece of garbage. And then we see that he has a long history of this. And now they're going to show, so the state-run media, the so just so you guys know, the coppers want to get rid of him and say he's the, the and this is an isolated incident. This is just this one guy who they've kept on the force all this time as he's beating and tasing pregnant women. Including this incident at a racetrack gas station. This is not a profession. Show us the rest of it that Mr. Giannis Martel is equipped from his actions to have. Giannis Martel also spoke shortly before sentencing as the victim watched. Did you see what the judge just said? This is not a man who's fit to be a, a cop. And now let's see if he gets a job in another state.
charged. I take full responsibility for my actions. And Bullshit, dude. You're just saying what you need to say so you can try to be a pig again. For what happened that night, it did not only affect Ms. Sasha, it affected me as well. We didn't hear him apologize to her. We didn't hear him explain why he took the actions he did. Whoa, he said it happened to me as well. What? What did he just say? Hear him apologize. He said it happened to me as well? Responsibility for my actions and for what happened that night. It did not only affect Ms. Sasha, it affected me as well. It affected you as well, you sociopath? He's literally a sociopath. It affected you and your job and what you're doing, and it affected your emotions? You're telling me you found your conscience after abusing people for how many years that you've been a pig? What are you talking about, bruh? We didn't hear him apologize to her. We didn't hear him explain why he took the actions he did. She, she's still pissed. You see that look on her face? She's not happy at all. Look at that. She's like, what a dick. He stood up there and said, it affected me too. You didn't, tase, you didn't get a taser in the gut with a dude on your belly, with his knee across your belly. Why he took the actions he did. So Yanis Martel must also complete 250 hours of community service. He has a week to turn himself in and be able to get his affairs in order. He also has 30 days in which he can file an appeal. Reporting live in Miami, Leanne Morejon, Local 10 News. Don't reach in my car. Why is y'all doing all that? You can't reach in my car. What are you doing? Like, no, what is he Why doing? Why is y'all doing all that? Like, what are you doing? What the fuck you doing? Why is you doing all that? Why the fuck is you doing all that? Are you serious? Oh for her neck, though. Oh my God. Oh my God. You, he's sucking the air out of her life. Did you hear that? Listen to her wheeze with the, with the air. Listen carefully. Let me turn it all the way up. Listen to her. Oh my God. I'm a For her neck, though. Why is you kneeing on her oh, neck, though? That's weird. Oh my God. Oh my God. And he only got 30 days. He tried to kill her. She's a hundred pounds and then tased her in the stomach with his knee across her neck. What a sicko. What a sicko. Get back. Get back. No. Why is he sitting there tasing her? Stop. Why are you tasing her? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. No, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Oh Why are y'all recording? Why is y'all tasing her? Stop, stop. Yes, stop. Stop. No. Like this is Can you please leave? Up, I swear no. Who, who's who, who's this guy? Someone should call this guy out. I'll do it right now. Can you Get please leave? Whoever that guy is is a total piece of garbage. They said what which club was this at? Like this. this you... Someone should call this guy out. He, where, where'd they say the club he was at? This is a piece of shit. Please leave. Oh, I swear to what a piece of shit. That guy's a piece of shit. Sorry about that. Sorry about the language. Man versus cop with no body camera. Jefferson City, Missouri police. Don't walk up any closer, bro. Let's go to this guy's channel real quick so we can like his video and put his link down in the chat. I'll just drop this right here real quick. So this is his channel. He's only got 353 subscribers. Let me give you a sub, bro. I'll give you a like before you even begin because you're out doing it. Man versus cops with no body camera. Nice. Is this good enough? What's that? Is this okay? Right there is fine. You're gonna create a crowd. You gotta be 
I'm looking out the window. So I'm gonna have the next time you curse or raise your voice, you're gonna go to jail for disorderly conduct. You're gonna go to jail for disorderly conduct. If you ain't even in, you're not going in handcuffs. It's pretty simple. That's all I need. Mean. Name, sir. I don't. I don't. I don't need. I don't need you to help me with my safety. I'm all right. Just released body cam footage shows the moments leading up to a deadly shooting. A police officer is seen walking around the outside of a home, shining a flashlight on the walls. What? What? You're being detained? What? What? <laughs> one uh, he's not even there for he's there for one minute and he's detained for filming did he just push his camera He took his phone out of his hands. I didn't see any stuff like you there. The phone. I don't hold the phone in my face. I did. Now you walk up to me. Dean Layla Mitchell is live in the newsroom after talking with the prosecutor and the Highway Patrol about what role body cameras play in an investigation. Layla, the prosecutor told you officers not having body cameras makes it difficult to eliminate reasonable doubt. Devin Lucas, the Jefferson City Police Department at this time does not wear body cameras and is unaware of when they will get them. I checked in with the city who told me body cameras are extremely important and they are working to get the funding for them before 2022. Not having a badge cam on is just by definition reasonable doubt. Former Cole County Prosecutor Bill Tackett told me having body camera footage makes it easier for prosecutors when presenting a case to the jury. You know, if we had the badge cam on, we wouldn't be here because we know exactly what happened. Tackett said without a body camera, it makes it possible for the defense to poke holes in the prosecutor's story and create reasonable doubt. Body cameras record video and audio, setting them apart from other security cameras that just record video. Body cam footage. What the hell? Nine times out of ten ends the discussion. Guilt. No, it doesn't. They edit it. Not guilt. When asked about body cameras, Corporal Kyle Green with the Missouri State Highway Patrol had this to say. Not difficult at all. It's just one extra piece of evidence. But uh, in this situation, I, I think that they'll be able to do a thorough investigation and, and the need of, of body camera footage isn't necessary. And we'll also look at the vehicle camera footage if, if they have it. Uh, we'll also look at local businesses and their cameras, security footage if they have it. And then we also ask the people who may have, uh, you know, witnessed the incident or filmed the incident on their phones to contact uh, the Highway Patrol. Time, the Highway Patrol is continuing the investigation, collecting facts and evidence to present to the prosecutor. For now, reporting live in the newsroom, Layla Mitchell, ABC 17 News. Okay, Layla, thank you. Because I, I have to go home at the end of my shift. And when I have to watch what you're doing... Wait a second. Wait a minute. There's the BS. Okay, Layla, thank you. Because I, I have to go home at the end of my shift. Okay. You are such a piece of trash. You're such a pig, bro. You're such a pig. I have to go home at the end of my shift. So whatever happens to you is irrelevant. Whatever happens to you, if I have to, if I get to, if I enjoy tasing you, hitting you, kicking you, punching you, abusing you, anything I want, I can do to you in the name of I get to go home safely. I have a right to go home safely. And that means that anything that happens to you was necessary. That's what that says. That's what that means. 
I have a right to go home safe to my family. You are a second class citizen. You are a peon. I make the government all of its money by arresting you. So I need to go home safe so that you can get arrested by one of my, me or by one of my brothers in blue. What, a, I have a right to go home safe to my family means anything can happen to you. Doesn't matter what it is, anything can happen to you. That's what that means. And it doesn't matter because he has a right to go home safe. And when I have to watch what you're doing. And when, no, no. I'll, oh, I wish I had enough time. I would head right over there and film this cop everywhere he goes. He's a, now a matter of public interest. Well, I, and I really don't give you permission to put my face on YouTube. It doesn't matter. You, you don't have the choice, jackboot thug pig. <laughs> it doesn't matter, I know sir. you're going to do it anyway. Well, it doesn't matter. Wow. Let's get his name and badge number. <laughs> Bro. The guy who's got his phone snatched, real quick here. Yeah, get over here, subscribe to this channel, give him a like. I already gave him a like, give him a like right there. Give him a subscription. He's only got 353. Let's get him some Watchdog Raid 00. Let me see what he's got here. Oh, he's just a regular dude who picked up a camera. What's up, Playboy? Ooh la la, Playboy. Okay, dude. Legal Ethics 101, seven hours ago. <laughs> He uploaded this seven hours ago. Legal Ethics 101. We're not going to watch it, but you get it. You get where, you get where his head is, where his heart is. He's frustrated. He doesn't like that that cop did that. L look at this jackboot thug pig. Look at this guy. Wow. What a loser, dude. What a loser. Really, what a loser. I, I, oh, he bounced his head off the wall. Do you see that? Watch what happens to the little kid's head. Watch the little kid's head. Look at that. Nice. Loser. Not justified. Authorities. Say when the suspect escalated into a fierce struggle. Authorities say when the suspect resisted, Officer Jacob Hobson resorted to excessive force. And despite the fact that Hobson never activated his body camera, an automatic feature kicked in, capturing a silent visual record of the arrest. KTLA 5's Shelby Nelson joins us live with more on what we're learning about the case. Hi, Shelby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm Hi, Sandy in court. Yeah, really troubling. The Riverside County Sheriff's Department never acted. Okay, we're going to have to go back here, okay? And you have to listen carefully to what is said here. Listen carefully. The fact that Hobson never activated his body camera. Why is he in charge with activating it? And why would the police ever get a copy of the footage at all? It should go to a third party immediately streamed. An automatic feature kicked in, capturing a silent visual record. <laughs> record of the arrest. KTLA 5's Shelby Nelson. Look at him. He looks like a real good guy. Nelson joins us live with more on what we're learning about the case. Hi, Shelby. Hi, Sandy and Court. Yeah, really troubling. The Riverside County Sheriff's Department, as well as the district attorney, are both now investigating. Now, what authorities released today generally talks about that alleged use of force, but today we also obtained those court documents that go into troubling detail about what happened on July 23rd. He's 29-year-old Jacob Hobson, a Hemet police officer now placed on paid leave in an excessive force investigation. This is video Hemet PD posted to their Instagram on February 3rd. 
showing Hobson conducting a traffic stop. He's now facing three felony charges in the case of a brutal beating. According to a declaration in support of arrest warrant, Officer Hobson responded to a call behind this Shell gas station on Florida Avenue in Hemet the morning of July 23rd. He attempted to handcuff a woman wanted for a felony warrant. Court documents indicate that she resisted. You see how they try to slant it? Felony warrant. So if it's a felony warrant, well, then it's justified that force is used on that person. It's justified. It's justified if it's a felony warrant. He tried to ex execute a felony warrant. It's a felony warrant. Okay. Wanted for a felony warrant. Court documents indicate that she resisted before Hobson. She resisted. Allegedly tackled her and punched her twice. When that didn't work, he allegedly open hand struck her on the right side of her head before slamming her back to the ground. The victim collapsing before she was placed in Hobson's patrol vehicle. Court documents detailing that she suffered a fractured skull. He fractured her skull? Brain bleeding and a fractured wrist. She was airlifted to a hospital to undergo surgery. The Riverside County District Attorney filing charges against Hobson Thursday. One count of assault with force likely to cause great bodily injury and two counts of assault by a peace officer under color of authority. There's also sentencing enhancement allegations that the assault caused great bodily injury that led to a significant brain injury. Before law enforcement announced that he had turned himself in and was booked in Riverside, we knocked on his door. Of course, no answer. We tried talking to neighbors, one of them telling us this after we read her his charges. How does that make you feel? Concerned and shocked. Former police officer and law enforcement expert Tim Lynn says it's obvious that the DA believes they have enough evidence to make a case. The next step uh, after. I think that painting might be the wrong thing to be sitting in front of. It looks like there's twigs coming out of his head. His hair almost matches in with the log. So, I don't know why you would choose that to sit in front of that. The officer surrenders himself will be a preliminary hearing. And at that point, the judge will make the determination if there's enough evidence to continue on to a full trial. And we put in a request for that body cam footage. In the meantime, Hobson is set to be arraigned in Banning on Monday. The DA tells us that if he is convicted of all charges and sentenced consecutively, he could face a maximum of 12 years in prison. Reporting live from Lake Elsinore, I'm Shelby Nelson, KTLA 5 News. <laughs> another, another one, another one. One of the two former Hylia police officers accused of kidnapping and beating a homeless man now knows his fate. Guilty of kidnapping. Man, two in a row. What a great stream this has been. Two in a row. Two pigs getting roasted. Two pigs going down. Two in a row. I am so happy to hear it. I'm not happy to hear that this guy kidnapped somebody. <laughs> he kidnapped another human being and beat them. <laughs> like what? It's a former Hialeah police officer, Rafael Otano. As to come to ban, the defendant is not guilty. Guilty of armed kidnapping, but not guilty of battery. That's the verdict for former Hialeah police officer, 28 year old Rafael Otano. <laughs> Otano's loved ones broke down in the courtroom as the judge ruled he would immediately be taken into custody to a Are you allowed Are you allowed to run up and kiss your loved one when they get sentenced or don't they all hold you back in the gallery We've all seen that Isn't this chick up here kissing on her husband we're not allowed to do that. They all hold you back, but not if you're a copper. Ones broke down in the courtroom as the judge ruled he would immediately be taken into custody to await his sentencing. Good. Good. He kidnapped somebody, but then he didn't batter them. <laughs> We're only going to stick him with one charge, okay? Just one charge. Just the kidnapping. But kidnapping is supposed to carry 10 years. He's going to get six months in prison. He's going to be out in six months and he kidnapped somebody.
<laughs> Members of his family who had attended the whole trial distraught, wailing in the hallway after the verdict. This whole case was about this guy getting... What's wrong with people? Why do they come walking at the camera telling the cameraman what to do? You're walking toward the camera telling the camera distraught wailing in the hallway after the verdict please that's all we want to see is the crying we want to see it everyone wants to see it this whole case was about this guy getting beaten up and the jury just found that he is not guilty of beating him up this <laughs> that's what i just said that's what i just said that he beat him and then they say they didn't beat him State and defense presenting closing arguments earlier Tuesday. Prosecutors arguing GPS evidence proves Otano was there and helped carry out an extrajudicial beating of Jose Ortega Gutierrez. They specifically oh, took him this. to... We covered this. They took him out. And the, the other cop lied and said, no, it must be a GPS system problem. ...to a dump site and treated him like trash. But the defense painting the testimony of Ortega Gutierrez, a homeless man, convicted felon, and admitted alcoholic, as not credible. And could not identify himself staring at his face on the screen. Defense attorneys now promising to appeal the felony conviction. And Otano... I mean, what about the abuse charges? That dude's face was beat in. Oh, ...is accused of doing this along with fellow officer Lorenzo Orfila. Orfila is facing these exact same charges, plus an additional charge of official misconduct. He has yet to face trial. The suggestion that he's guilty, that he's not guilty of the battery, which is what this case was about, but he's guilty of kidnapping somebody. How do you kidnap someone and not beat them to go with you? No one just goes with you. You got to beat them so that they won't leave. Like, it's, it's Psycho 101. When he never arrested the person, never touched him, never had him in his squad car, and one of the officers who actually arrested him, Abascal, was never even given a reprimand or, or given discipline in any way, shape, or form, and he's out there right now. So this this is an outrage. The verdict makes no sense. The verdict makes absolutely. The verdict is totally absurd. It, it, it's abs I, I mean, it's absurd. If, as the jury found, Mr. Rattano never battered him, if, as the jury found, Mr. Rattano is not guilty of battering, not guilty of touching, he cannot be guilty of kidnapping. GPS evidence claimed to show the officers drove Ortega Gutierrez to a dump site in the opposite direction of the jail. Yeah, and remember, the supervising officer had already testified that no, no, the GPS system was wrong. It was mistaken. The defense maintained Otano responded as backup and did not touch the alleged victim. In Florida, an armed kidnapping charge is a first degree felony punishable by up to life in prison. Yeah. One of the ch I hope he goes to prison forever. I can't stand them. They're the jackboot thug pigs. They are such jackboot thug pigs. You guys do me a favor, just type that in the comments for me. Jackboot thug pig. J B T P. Put it right in the comments for every single jackboot thug pig there is in our country. And there's absolute listen to me. You know as well as I do, I'll tell you every time you invoke the Fifth Amendment 100 times out of 100, you don't talk to them. They want to beat on you. They want to hurt you. They want to arrest you. They want to take you to a dungeon. The police, their goal is to arrest you, impound your car, and steal your money. What you want to do immediately is invoke your Fifth Amendment right. That's what you want to do. You want, when you pull up to a cop, the cop pulls up to you, you are recording the interaction, you show the Fifth Amendment to the camera, then you show it to the cop and you say, I invoke my Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. And you don't talk. I invoke my Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. That's what you do. They want to take you to a dark site and beat your face in. They are so raging angry. They want to hurt you. They want to arrest you.
you your worth and right. This is the most important right you have right now. You invoke your Fifth Amendment right when you see these jackboot thug pigs. Listen to what I'm telling you now. Listen to me. I'm making a wallet size one of these. So you, it's a little laminated card. You take the little laminated card, you stick it in your pocket, coming out right away. I mean, I'm... You guys don't understand how serious I am. The most powerful amendment you have right now is your Fifth Amendment right. Tell me their goal is not to arrest you. Say that right now. Someone tell me right now you disagree with me. If you disagree with me, I want to hear it. The cop's goal is to arrest you. Do you disagree with me? Do you think that I'm lying to you? Do you think I'm just making things up? Do you think I'm just hyperbole over here? Is the cop's goal to arrest you, yes or no? Is the cop's goal to arrest you? Put it in the comments right now, yes or no. Yes. When the cop pulls you over, when the cop interacts with you, he's looking for a reason he can arrest you. That's an absolute and total fact. There's no more plain fact than that one right there. The cop wants to arrest you. That's it. His goal is to arrest you. He pulls you over, he wants to arrest you. He walks up to you on the street and says, how's your day going? He wants to arrest you. That's why you immediately invoke your Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. I invoke my Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. You don't double talk. You don't say, oh, yes, no, maybe. Where are you heading? I don't want to tell you. You don't say that. Do you know how fast you were going? You don't answer. You invoke your Fifth Amendment right as you record. That's what you do right there. You get this on delete laws. Nine bucks to print at home. 30 bucks for this one. I give it away for free all the time to people who email me and say, I'm on a fixed income. I don't give a damn. You invoke your Fifth Amendment right to remain silent when you are involved with coppers. Do you understand me? If we agree right now, if you agree with me right now, right in the comment, is the cop's goal to arrest you? Yes or no? When the cop pulls you over, is his goal to arrest you? Yes, it is. When the cop interacts with you in the street in almost any situation, is his goal to arrest you? Yes, it is then why would you talk to him? How you doing today, officer? Why? Why, why do you care how he's doing? He, he's doing exactly what he signed up to do, to arrest you. That's his job. You see it. You see it. And if you don't kowtow to the authority, then they take you to a dark site and they beat your face in. And then the jury finds him guilty of kidnapping, but not beating your face in. <laughs> But not beating your face in. The jury finds him not guilty of the black eyes, the fat lip, the swollen melon. They didn't do that to you. They kidnapped you, though. What are we talking about? He said something to those coppers. He said something to the coppers. He set that copper off, that psycho, psycho, psycho copper right there. I invoke my Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. That's how you do it. <laughs> That's how you do it. That is how you do it. That's how you do it. <laughs> Don't get me singing. That is how you do it. Jack Boot Thug Pig. Victor. Victor. Doctor. Doctor. <laughs> Lenny. <laughs> All right. Listen, I got to get the flock out of here. I'm I'm late. I'm so late. I'm sorry I'm so late, but I'm late. I'm late. I got to get the flock out of here. Listen, Victor, thanks for coming. I think I saw KT, what is going on? Glenn, what is going on? Listen, you got to have a trifold in your car. You absolutely have got to have a trifold in your car. If you didn't buy it, I'll give it to you for free. If you bought it for $9, thanks. If you bought the indestructible one, thank you. You have got to have a trifold in your car. You have to have a trifold in your car and you don't talk back and forth with the copper. If he tries to search your car and he, you want to give him permission, nod your head yes if you want to. And then if you want to, you immediately open up the car to United States versus Williams and you say, I revoke consent. I revoke consent. You can't search my car anymore. And you take away the consent for him to search the car. I should really even... Maybe that's maybe that's what I should do. Maybe I should let the cop search my car and then revoke consent. Tell him I revoke consent. Maybe that's a thing I could do. Playboy. All right.
<laughs> I gotta get the block out of here. I, I, I really don't want you to F it up. Don't talk to that pig. Don't talk to the pig. Chevy! Dr. Donna, Bobby, Shy, what's going on? KT, what is going on? Good to see everybody. Listen, I've got to get the flock out of here. I'm late. I'll see you guys on the next one. Later, Gators.